Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover a load more feature that you've probably seen on apps like Twitter, or I guess they're calling it X now, where a user might tweet something and then other users in the application end up uh, having that broadcasted to them in the form of like a load one new tweets button. Now in this case, the way this is working is it's being done through an action cable server. Uh, there's probably going to be someone asking why I'm not using Turbo for this. And honestly, the, the answer is just because I wanted to use Action Cable. Uh, you could probably get away with doing something similar with Turbo, where you just broadcast the stuff and then hide it, and then I guess have like a listener that then unhides it whenever the button's clicked. Uh, but in this case, the way that I do it is I have an Action Cable server. Whenever something gets posted, it then gets broadcasted to the server. You can probably see the button appear here, and that's because I was a little bit lazy with how I did this. Uh, but effectively it broadcasts to everyone, but the person who posts the tweet has the page reloaded so that, uh, you know, they don't have to click the button, but you could also make this not reload the page and then the person would just have to click the, the load more button or whatever, and it would function effectively the same way. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be using Action Cable for this because I feel like Action Cable is not really talked about that much these days. So I've been having a lot of fun just, uh, you know, showing off what it can do. So we're going to go ahead and do a Rails new video. We'll CD into the video project and then we'll run a code dot. I do have an entire list of commands we're going to be running and pretty much everything we're going to be doing is copy pasted. So this should actually be a pretty quick tutorial compared to what we normally do. But I'm going to go ahead, hit F11 here and then give this a second to uh, finish creating the Rails app. And then we can go ahead and CD, or I guess we're already in the app. So I'll just bump up the font size a bit. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is add a couple gems. We're going to be using Devise for the user account. So we'll use Devise and we're using Faker for some fake data because we're going to be seeding the application. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that. Next, we'll go ahead, we'll do a Rails G Devise install, and then we'll do a Rails G Devise user. We're just combining these two commands to save ourselves a little bit of uh, time. Once that's done, we can then go ahead, because we now have user accounts with Devise, we can go ahead and generate a scaffold for our tweets. We'll create a body of type text and a user colon references, which will add the belongs to to the tweets, saying it belongs to a user. Uh, if you want users to has many though, you'll still have to go into the user model to add that. Next, because we're doing some uh, stuff here where we click a button, we're of course gonna be using stimulus. So we'll say Rails G stimulus to generate a stimulus controller called tweets. And then the final thing we need to do because we're using action cable here is we're gonna go ahead and just generate a uh, channel called tweets. And this is gonna function similar to the video we did the other day on the r slash place clone where you could like click the pixels and it would broadcast the the palette to everyone so you could see in real time as people were like adding stuff. Uh, we're going to be using the uh, stimulus or the, the action cable channel to create like an event and then that, that'll vent that event will then be uh, listened to in the stimulus controller. So let's go ahead. Let's do this real fast. I'm going to move this over here uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll full screen this. So first thing I want to do is come into our seeds file. So we'll come up to DB and our seeds. And in here, we're just going to create some users and create some tweets. So we destroy all our users in our tweets. We then create three different user accounts because we're using device. We have to pass in a password confirmation. We then create uh, 50 different tweets. We use Faker for the body and we just sample the users to get a random distribution of users for this. And then we just puts all of that. So now if we come over here and do a Rails DB colon migrate command, you'll see that gets migrated. And then we can do a Rails DB colon seed command. And you should see the terminal fill up with the users being created and then with the tweets being created. And now we can go ahead and do a Rails S, and then we can come into our config and our routes.rb. And here we just want to set the root to be the posts, or sorry, the tweets controller index action and save that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll hit Control Shift R here in both of these windows to hopefully get this to refresh without those channels running around. I'll go ahead and minimize this for now. But okay, that takes care of our seeds and our routes. What's the next step? Well, next we want to probably come into our models and our tweet.rb. We're going to be working from the back end towards the front end here. So in our tweet, just like with a uh, turbo stream, we're just going to do a after commit or after create uh, broadcast tweet. And then we'll go ahead and we'll say private. And then we have two different options. We can do the broadcast tweet right now uh, where we just say, uh, when you do this, uh, something similar to this, but not quite this much detail, we could do it like this. Or we could say, uh, instead of passing in like the ID, the body, the user ID, etc., we can do a action cable dot server dot broadcast to the tweets channel. First of all, this should also be the tweets channel. Uh, and then we could pass in a rendered tweet, which is just going to be a quick little helper that we create that says application controller dot render dot render, where we have a partial uh, for the tweets slash tweet partial. And then we pass in the tweet itself. 
So again, you have different options here. You also don't really need to do this. Uh, this is just what GitHub Copilot thinks you should do. Uh, in this case, it kind of just makes sense to just throw this in here, but you could probably move like the render tweet portion somewhere else because it doesn't make sense to have that in the model either. But okay, now that we have this, we are effectively saying after we create a tweet, we then broadcast it to the action cable server or the action cable channel. Now, as is tradition, we are broadcasting this, but we're not saying what happens after we receive it, right? So we come into our tweets channel, and the first thing we have to say is, all right, because we're broadcasting to a tweets channel, we need to stream from a tweets channel. So that's when we initially subscribe to this channel, we stream from this. And then we need to say what happens when we receive data because we're sending data, right? But we're not receiving it. So when we receive data, we're just gonna do an actioncable.server.broadcast to the tweets channel with that data. And that, that'll be fine right there. So that's two of our backend uh, situation setup. Let's now come into our tweets controller. In our tweets controller, pretty much the only thing we have to do is come down to the bottom, we'll get rid of this user ID. And then we can come up here to this create action and we'll just merge in the uh, current user so that we don't have to do anything else. Uh, and then we can come up to the top here and I'm gonna do something a little bit weird. But we're gonna do our authenticate user except for the show action. I'm gonna leave index as needing to be logged in because I think that's kind of how Twitter works. You can like link someone to a specific tweet, which would be the show page. But if you go to like the index page, you have to sign in, I think. Uh, but we'll just go with that. Now we're gonna change the order of our tweets real quick. We'll just set it to order by created at descending, and then we'll create a new tweet so that we can have that form there just to save us a little bit of time. All right, so that is effectively our backend. Now let's deal with the uh, style sheet real quick so that we can not have to look at this again because I hate doing CSS. Uh, we just have three different classes. We have a notice for a color of green, a center, which just uses flex and center, and then the hidden class as well. And then we can go ahead and close this because we're done here. So now that we have that, we can deal with our, I guess let's come into our JavaScript. So in our JavaScript channel, we want to say, all right, when we receive that data in our actual tweets channel right here, that's going to be broadcast to the front end right here. So now in the front end, we have to say what happens when we receive data? Well, when we receive data, we know we're getting this tweet partial here because it's being sent to our tweets channel. And then that's coming here. So we'll say, all right, let's create a new event. We'll call the event new tweet. We'll give it a detail with the data, and then we can go ahead and do a window.dispatch event, and that should be good to go. So now we can come into our stimulus controller, our tweets controller right here. And in our stimulus controller, we can do a couple of things. First thing we wanna do is we need to set a couple of targets, one for the container and one for the notifications. We can then in our connect, create an empty array. This will be uh, where we're pushing new tweets into, because remember we have like that list or we're gonna have like five new tweets here. We're just gonna push it into an array and then we'll add it to the window whenever it's appropriate. And then we can say, all right, we have this event just like in our r slash place clone. Let's go ahead and let's listen to this. So we'll add an event listener for the new tweet event, which is what we called it. We can then console log out the event.detail if we want to, and it's called event.detail because again, in here we passed in detail.data, which is why we're doing event.detail, right? Because that's gonna have that data inside of it. We can then say this.newtweets.push, and then we can call a method called show notification. Now, because we're adding this listener, let's also just real quick set up the disconnect where we remove this listener. Then we can do the show notification, which is pretty self-explanatory. It takes in an event, which isn't used because this is pretty sloppy code. And then we say this.notification target style display is equal to block. And then we set the notification.inner text equal to uh, this, this load, whatever. Now you could probably set this to use um, the class that we set for, or like use a separate class for a display of block and a display of hidden. Uh, but this is like a fragment from refactoring. So, you know, your mileage may vary. The final thing we have to do here is load the tweets, which is a little deceptive because the tweets are already kind of here. So we just say this.new tweets for each, we create a parser, we parse from the string because this is gonna pass back the entire partial as a like string. And then we create a tweet node from the first element in this HTML node that we have here, which is just gonna be like our tweet partial. It's gonna be all of the HTML that's inside of our tweet partial. So it'll look just like this. So we take this entire thing in our tweet node, we prepend it to our container target, which is gonna be like our tweets container, right? We then clear our array because we've now loaded them all and we set the display back to none. So that takes care of that. Now let's come up here and let's deal with our uh, our views because we're pretty much done here. So let's come into our tweet. Well, let's come into our form first and let's get rid of this user ID because we don't need it. Then let's come into our tweet partial. Uh, in our tweet partial, we're just gonna change it a little bit. 
Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to make a class for this, so we can probably just do that real quick. We'll just give this a class equal to tweet. That, and then we can come up to our assets style sheets, application.css, we'll do dot tweet, and then we'll paste this in, and we'll hit enter, and we'll hit enter, just like that. There we go. So we have a div with an ID of tweet, or a tweet underscore whatever the ID is, and then we have this class of tweet. We have our tweet.user.email, which is coming from devise, and then we have the tweet.body. Last thing we have to do is come into our index page, and in here we have to kind of construct all of this. So first thing we'll do is we'll center the tweets header. We can then go ahead and add our form, which we're just gonna do by saying uh, center content, pass in the form, uh, and pass in the tweet that we created in our controller, which is just a new tweet. Then we need to set up our stimulus controller and do a couple other things. So we're actually going to get rid of all of these uh, things in here, and we're gonna just paste this in. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter a couple times so you can actually read this, uh, but this is pretty much it. So we uh, established that our stimulus controller is the tweets controller, so we connect the tweets controller. We then have a div here, which just centers some content. The content is the button we click to load more tweets. So initially it's hidden, that's why we're using the class. The tweets target is just what we use in our tweets controller to like use this this button. Instead of having a, to do like a document .get element by ID, we just say this dot notification target because it's called notification here. And in our index page, we set it to be notification. Then on click, it calls the tweets load new tweets action. Then we just have a tweets target container so we can prepend to it, remember, because we're adding stuff to the beginning. And then we just iterate through each of the tweets, uh, which are in a P tag for some strange reason, but we'll just go ahead and render it like that instead. Uh, and then now let's go ahead and let's refresh. <clears throat> It'll tell us to log in. I'll go ahead and open up the incognito window as well. We'll refresh here and it'll tell us to log in too. I've already created two accounts in our seed file. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. We'll log in as uh, dean at example.com and john at doe.com with a password of password. There we go. So we have both of these tweets and now let's go ahead and let's see if this actually works. We'll come over here from Dean and we'll say, hello world, hit create tweet. Uh, and here it's redirecting me back to the tweets show page, which I kind of don't like. Uh, and over here, we can see that John has a option to load one new tweet. But I'm gonna come back here and let's come into our tweets controller and let's change this a little bit uh, because I kind of want to do this to be like a little bit lazy. So we'll just redirect to the tweets path here. We'll say tweets path like that. And that should be good for testing. So I'll go ahead and minimize this. So now we can say testing one, two, three, hit create tweet. That shouldn't re redirect us to the show page anymore, but we might have to actually refresh. So let's do one, two, three. It'll say load one new tweet, and then we'll say four, five, six, hit create. And now you can see load two new tw tweets. So we'll go ahead and we'll click this button, and we expect the testing one, two, three to go away. And instead, we have both of these here from dnetexample.com. Yeah, you could also use Turbo if you wanted to. It would probably just be a little bit of a different setup. Uh, but you know, hopefully this was still interesting and helpful, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.